We are here at 5G World Summit in London. I'm very happy to be joined by Mansur Hanif from EE. Mansur, good to see you. Hi, Graham. So, obviously we're talking 5G several years away. The UK market was somewhat later coming to LTE. Obviously EE were first. Does that mean 5G will maybe hit the UK that little bit later as well as you realize the possibilities of LTE? No, but certainly we'll do everything we can for that not to happen. You're right, we were late coming to the party and uh, now that we've caught up and we're slightly getting ahead perhaps on LT Advanced, we have no intention to fall behind again. So I'm very confident that we'll be right up there with the, the early launchers of 5G. And we've heard already this morning from various delegates that there are issues when it comes to determining the right spectrum bands for 5G and also whether there's the right regulation in place to handle the new types of devices that will be connected. Do you think we need more regulation in place to reflect this changing market? I think um, I think there's good and bad in that. I mean, the reason why it's so difficult to agree on the spectrum uh, allocations is that there's so much possibilities and so much flexibility there. So I think that's a good thing for creativity and innovation. So um, I think we're very lucky to be potentially having a standard which could fit into loads of different spectrum bands. So yes, we do need to find a choice of spectrum which fits as many um, squares as possible around the world. It might take a bit of time. But in the meantime, we can start to innovate on certain bands. We can uh, start to experiment with certain bands. But I think the more we get to kind of a tunable radio solution that you could easily shift between one band and the other, I think that would be a fantastic way for us to get ahead while we're still waiting for the spectrum to be totally finalized. And in terms of regulation, I actually think we need less regulation. Um, I think some of the use cases that we could start doing today with LT Advanced, and especially with LT Advanced Pro, we can't do because the legislation doesn't allow it. So I think we need to be a bit more flexible in terms of airborne solutions. I think we need to be a bit, bit more flexible in terms of uh, vehicle gateways. We could be more flexible <coughs> in terms of the way we are allowed to do device to device, et cetera. So those are all elements which I, I hope will be embedded into the f or removed from the 5G regulation to, to allow us to be totally creative and innovative in those fields. Big news in the UK, obviously, over the past week has been uh, Britain's decision to leave the European Union. Really? Apparently so. <laughs> um, I was curious from a, from a UK telco perspective, obviously there's been a lot of innovation funded by the European Union and also a lot of people who have come to the UK to work in the telecoms industry. How do you think Brexit will affect the UK telecoms industry in terms of attracting staff and also being able to innovate? Well, I, I think the general sentiment is regret and a little bit sad. And I, but I don't think uh, it's, it will impact the telecoms industry in such a broad way as it will other industries such as the financial industry. The reason being that, yes, we have a lot of benefits of being in the European programs, but there are a lot of other programs which are above the European programs and are actually actually bilateral or multilateral agreements. And a lot of the research we do is also through those. So I think rather than us you know, <coughs> losing out, I think we will not be able to realize the full potential of what we could have done uh, remaining within the European Union. But certainly I know in the telecoms industry, you know, in the UK, we feel very much European, and the cooperation will continue through those uh, bilateral and multilateral agreements on the research field or the innovation field and the development field, and certainly we'll be very keen to continue those engagements. And in terms of attracting the best talent, I think that's really important for us, whether we're part of the European Union or not, and we'd like the UK to be a place where the best, you know, minds from around the world come here rather than going to Silicon Valley or anywhere else, because they feel welcome, and I think one of the areas which we will struggle with now is if people believe that the, the UK population are not welcoming to uh, the best talent from around the world, that's very unfortunate. We have to make sure that people do feel welcome here and that they feel that they can come here and feel comfortable and innovate in a supportive environment. And that's where we should be putting our focus now to make sure we do attract them. Excellent. Thank you very much.